So we've got the gearbox on the table and we're about ready to split it open. Now I've got one bit of advice before you do. There's a massive 14mm Allen key on the back here. So you really want to crack that while it's still on the engine or in the car because it takes a bit of force and it's a bit of a faff when it's on the table. The other thing I've done is I've drained this of oil. It's so easy to forget and if you do, you split this open and everything around you is suddenly going to be swimming in a sea of black. You ever played the game The Floor is Lava? Well imagine that, but with gearbox oil. Now the oil drain is just this weird little thing down below the differential. Um, if you are doing this yourself, you'll be able to see it a mile off. It's the round one with the square cut into it instead of being a normal bolt. Now that out of the way, let's say about opening this thing up. When I've got the case off, we can see here we've got the gear cluster, the selector and the final drive. Now at this point I'm going to have a look in here and see what kind of differential I've got. You can actually do this while the gearbox is still on the car just by looking through the gap with the drive shafts out. So if you look through there you can see the shaft going across the inside of my differential. Now this means I've got an open diff and not a limited slip. If you're seeing something different it'll be one of three things. Either you'll be able to see nothing there, it'll go straight through and you've got a torsion type B. Or, it will be completely filled in except for my pinhole through the middle and you've got a torsion type A. Or if you're really lucky, it will be filled in but with a hole that's larger than what's on a type A but still definitely with something in the middle. In which case Christmas came early for you because you've got a quaff limited slip differential. Now that that's done, let's get some more of this out of the box. So next up, to really be able to get in and count my gears, I'm going to have to get my shafts out. You have the main shaft here and the input shaft here. Now to remove those, I'm going to have to get rid of my reverse selector here the reverse idler back there, and of course the shifter forks which bolt down here. So let's get these pulled out so I can have a good look. Now the first ratio you saw me count out was my first gear and that's the ratio between this little cog here and the big cog in this shaft and that gives us the letter at the start of our serial number. On a standard Elise S1 this will be a C and that will mean that on this shaft we have 12 teeth and on this shaft we have 38. On a B gearbox which is the close ratio speedy thing that came in stuff like the Exiges I've still got 38 teeth on this cog but I've got 13 on this one. 
Now in my gear cluster, I've got 12 on the little one, which that, that makes sense. But I've got 39 on the big one, which doesn't. So I moved on to the final drive. Now the final drive ratio, that gives us the second entrant in our serial number, which for our purposes will either be a six or a four. Four for a final drive of 4.2 on the close ratio gearboxes, or six for 3.83 something something decimals, which is the standard final drive. Now I counted these out. I've got 63 on this cog, and I've got 16 on the smaller cog over here in the shaft, meaning I just have a standard final drive of 3.83. So the second part of the serial number will be a six, but it's not a C6, and it's not a B6. And after a bit of googling, it turns out that this is a G6, which isn't actually a standard Series One gearbox. In fact, it's not a standard Rover gearbox. It's not a standard MG gearbox. Turns out the only thing that this G6 BP, as it turns out to be, is it came in one very specific model of Series 2 at least. A Series 2 K Series 111S. Now, this gearbox isn't a close ratio gearbox, it's actually a longer ratio gearbox, meaning that it should sit at lower RPMs and have a higher top speed. However, it sat at 3000 RPM in the motorway, so I can't imagine what it was like with a short ratio gearbox trying to sit at 70. But anyways, We've worked out what it is, maybe not what I was hoping for, but either way, better button it back.
Well, if you came here for an informational how-to video on how to tear down and rebuild a Rover PG1 gearbox and K-Series engine, then I hope you found someone else who actually knows what they're doing. If you just came here to watch me muck about in my garage, then I hope you enjoyed it. Now, obviously this isn't the gearbox we were hoping for. We wanted a short ratio box that would have gone some way towards funding my seat and or suspension replacement. Long boxes just aren't as popular. The Elises, they've not got a massive amount of power, so you really want the short ratios for extra acceleration. So the long boxes just does the opposite job of that. Now, it always bears remembering, you saw me when I was on the bench testing that it went into all the gears. If you can test something on the bench, do it. You don't want to put this in a car and then find out you've put something in the wrong way around and have to rip the whole thing back out. Now, the actual car itself, speaking of, um, the next video on that will probably be in a while because the next job in that is the wiring, which I won't be doing cause I suck at wiring. So the next video will be that all going back together in the first start. Now that will be a while and a couple of people have actually asked me when my next video is, which is I guess why I'm filming stuff like this. Um, for the like three of you that look forward to me putting these up, um, I've got another project coming up and that should tide us over until then. However, until then, um, I'm out. See ya.